Remember when I said I wasn't going to do another iceberg chart? Well, that was a damn lie. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I find iceberg chart videos to be really entertaining here on this website. How you can have any subject matter go from the bare basic knowledge of it to the deeper you go, things just get more insane and abstract. And today I figured I could do this just like how I did with black metal to another genre within extreme music, that being grindcore. So a huge reason as to why I'm doing this iceberg chart for grindcore is that I've always complained about it before, but when it comes to the discussion of grindcore for the most part, especially here on YouTube, it seems like people talk about literally the same 10 bands over and over again. And there's just so much that this genre has, and no one really dives all that deep within it. And by definition, what grindcore is, it's a mixture of death metal, hardcore, punk, and noise rock. It's four different styles just clashing into each other all the time. And there's just so many different like sounds you can get from it. And uh, the deeper we go, things just get batshit insane, which is saying a lot because grindcore from itself, just the entry level bands are quite crazy. Also for a little side note, the setup for this iceberg chart is identical to the previous iceberg chart that I did, that it's gonna have seven tiers and I'm categorizing each tier, not by like subgenres, but more or less in like styles and overall like kind of like nicknames that I give them. So again, the deeper we go, the more abstract and crazy things are going to get. So without further of a delay, let's start it off at tier number one, that being Entry Grind. So as you can tell, this tier title is pretty self-explanatory. Entry Grind, literally grindcore bands that you would know by heart if you know what grindcore is. Put the word grindcore in the search bar in Google and these will be the bands that pop up first. Obviously at the head helm would be Napalm Death as they're credited as being like the creators and innovators of grindcore itself. Then you got Carcass, which I know their early albums are a huge influence of that on death grind. Even though they transformed to more of a melodic uh, death metal band nowadays, there's no denying that the impact they have on gore grind and death grind with their first three albums is very significant. Then you have Pig Destroyer, Discordance Axis, Warm Rot, Terrorizer, that again, these are all grindcore bands that have you know a pretty diehard fan base and quite a bit of success for grindcore standards anyway within the genre that you should just kind of know as they're always talked about when the discussion of grindcore is brought up. And the last band that I'll include within tier one for entry level is the one and only Anal Cunt. Because I feel like the whole reason as to why people look at grindcore as it's such a degenerate and immature style of extreme music is because of these guys alone from their stage presence, song titles, and overall attitude. Now we're going to move down the iceberg a bit and move on to tier number two, which I call the punk side of grind. So arguably grindcore is more rooted in punk music than it is of metal. And all the bands within this tier clearly take more influence of that of hardcore punk than death metal. Even a bit of power violence is going to be kind of like tagged under some of these bands. And I think the first band that needs to be mentioned within this tier that arguably by definition if you want to get like super nerdy might actually sh and should be the first ever grindcore band is Siege with their release Drop Dead. Arguably, you could call this release by Siege, Drop Dead, which obviously influenced the band Drop Dead, as Proto Grind, because this was released in 1984, a few years before the you know, actual genre tag Grindcore was really created, and you can tell from its overall execution and writing that it has a lot of the attributes that we would be accustomed to hearing with Grindcore. And I feel like during its time, it really had quite the impact on a lot of uh, cross-punk and punk bands to just go balls out crazy with some of their albums, because it definitely took a bit of uh, influence on other bands such as, you know, like Leftover Crack, 
uh, extreme noise, terror, and even dooms police state to a certain extent that again all kind of fit with under the tag as proto grind. And on the other hand, we have more of like the power violence bands that again just loosely have a grip on what grindcore is to a certain extent. A few bands that are worth mentioning is one, definitely Godstopper. This band kicks a hell of a ton of ass, and it is just pulverizing power violence that again has influences of that of like drum and bass and uh, obviously grindcore, fastcore to a certain extent. Then there's uh, Spaz, another one that gets uh, that name gets thrown around quite a bit for influence. Then of course, if we're talking about power violence and like again that grindcore hybrid, gotta bring up Man Is the Bastard. This is a must know band if you were to ever throw around the tag power violence. Okay, and just for the hell of it, that way I don't get like any comments asking about it. Nails. I guess they would fit under this, because I know their first two albums, again, are categorized as, like, power violence and grindcore and, like, plus punk and all that stuff. So, just for the hell of it, I'll attach nails within this tier two and announce that. Descending another level down the iceberg, we go to tier number three, which I categorized under the metal side of grind. I'll state before I start talking about all the bands that would fit within this tier that arguably you could change up tier 2 or tier 3, the metal side of grind or the punk side of grind, arguably whatever band you're talking about or comparing or contrasting, yeah, I feel like these two tiers are interchangeable to a certain extent. But again, the reason why I put the punk side of grind more accessible and higher up within the chart over the metal side of grind is that again, Grindcore is more rooted within punk music, so it kind of makes sense to a certain extent, where the metal side of Grind, they're kind of expanding in a different direction. So once again, this tier name is pretty self-explanatory. These are typically going to be bands that have more of like a death grind uh, style to them. You got bands like Exhum that have more of like a thrashy kind of death grind approach. Insect Warfare, which I know that's another band and name that gets thrown around a lot for uh, grindcore fans. Mortician, which has more of like that brutal death grind style, but again has gained a lot of popularity over the past couple of years, all because of like memes from what a lot of people have uh, talked about with them. And of course their sick horror samples. Then you got some of the big influencers for that of death grind, that being Brutal Truth, Repulsion, and Ass Suck that they may not have like the biggest discographies, but the impact they have on Death Grind is undeniable. And the last minute addition I'll include is what's actually playing in the background, that being Flagidious Idiosyncrasy and the Dilapidation. The name's ridiculous, but this band kicks so much ass, and I love the fact that the band consists of just like these four little Japanese women that are like under five feet tall, and they look like they couldn't harm a fly, but their overall music just slays so hard that it rivals that of like any other big name grindcore band. And it just surprises me that like no one ever talks about these girls. So seriously, the name's ridiculous, but the music is just so fun and ass kicking. Plus, I just love saying the name. Flagidious idiosyncrasy and the dilapidation. Mm, just rolls right off the tongue. Okay, now this is where the bands start to get a little bit weird within this portion of the chart. Because now we have reached tier number four, which I call, and it's kind of like a genre that is kind of an actual term, but it's cyber grind. From my understanding of cyber grind, because I've known about this style of music or genre, if you want to call it that to a certain extent, but it's more like you take grindcore and apply like electronic or industrial music with it. And it's kind of unorthodox for the most part because it was really difficult to find really any bands that would fit this style correctly, but the first band to bring up, obviously, is The Berserker. It's really one of the only bands you can find that is just straight up considered like industrial death grind, 
and with their you know drum samples that they use and some of the electronics especially with some of their audio samples it's really kind of like the band that kind of painted the blueprints for what cyber grind would be if it was ever to be anything oh man this brings back memories talking about this band because i remember talking about this jokingly with a friend in high school and it's just so weird that I would know about this in high school. But uh, then there's We Came With Broken Teeth. This is another cyber grind band by definition that uses programmed drums to just like a ridiculous like BPM of like over 300. Uh, glitch moments, I guess. Really distorted vocals and guitars that really just don't add anything other than noise. And, uh, yeah, if you kind of want, like, legitimate, like, MySpace cyber grind, We Came With Broken Teeth is kind of like the definitive band. Oh, and another one that, again, I remember talking about this with a high school friend, which, again, I don't know why I had a friend that just kind of knew cyber grind to a certain extent, but one he really liked was called Gigantic Brain. Again, really similar to that of uh, We Came With Broken Teeth with programmed drums, glitch, and electronic uh, segments within it. But I guess what it has like its own standout feature is like the vocal effects that uh, the sole member will use when he does vocals, obviously, with this Cybergrind project. I guess as well, Reek of the Unzen Gas Fumes would fit this. Again, a mixture of black metal, grindcore, and industrial. And I guess they fit it mainly because, again, they will have like some noise segments with some of their songs, even at more like a noise grind uh, portion to a certain extent. But it's really their programmed drums that, you know, being so bulky and obnoxious that it kind of favors more of like an industrial like execution as to why, with like, I know I'm kind of like forcing it to a certain extent, Reek of the Unzen Gas Fumes would fit this tier. And the last cyber grind band that is easily the weirdest out of everything within this tier is Cutting Pink with Knives. I recently discovered this before making this chart, and this is very unorthodox to say the least, because this band combines synth pop like pure synth pop in grindcore and it's like really weird to hear like a synthy pop song with like beats you would hear like on the radio or something accessible and a dude just like wailing harsh vocals on top of it or even having blast beats with some songs it's very unorthodox but really interesting at the same time to say the very least because i never thought i'd come across something that's synth pop and grindcore like 50-50 down the middle. Descending once again to tier number five, which I call oddball grindcore. So this tier consists of all bands that I would categorize as more like avant-garde and experimental grindcore. And one individual that is a must know if you want to know about experimental grindcore is the one and only John Zorn. This guy is honestly a madman of a musician. How he has made so much music within his lifetime and the fact that his head is still attached to his body is incredible. Like, he has done so much work. And he's mostly known for one of his many bands, that being Naked City, which is considered jazz grind as uh, he obviously took a lot of influence from Napalm Death, he was a fan of it. I know his other band, which again is more pure jazz grind, that being Painkiller, was signed to Earache in the 90s, but Naked City, this is like the definition of just insanity, already, <laughs> of like what music can do. And it's incredible. It's truly a one-of-a-kind experience that, um, yeah, if you ever wondered what free jazz, like improv jazz, and grindcore would sound like, listen to this. Because they play jazz music just so obnoxiously aggressive that it inadvertently turns into grindcore. And it's just amazing. 
And the impact and influence that, that this has on experimental music is undeniable again because bands like Mr. Bungle took a lot of influence from this. Then you have Horker, which was the first uh, project done by Gautier Seer, who's mainly known for his uh, breakcore project, Igor. But before, he actually had more of like a metal-driven bass, I guess, kind of like breakcore project that had a lot of usage of death grind influence with breakcore, industrial, and electronic and glitch. And this throws death grind in a, a different realm that I don't think a lot of people are kind of familiar with. That it's basically like death grind and breakcore side by side. And this shit is really pulverizing and creative. Another widely known band, at least for this tier, would be Full of Hell. That I, I would say their early works definitely fit this uh, tier of oddball quite a bit, as they'll just throw kind of like shit at the wall with a lot of power electronics, power violence, noise, and grindcore for the most part, just all kind of like bashing each other's heads in with it that really puts, like, experimental grindcore for the most part on the map to a certain extent, getting a lot of attention for it. Which, of course, I also have to bring up one of my personal favorite bands that's very similar to that of Full of Hell, that being Endin. If you enjoy Full of Hell, Endin is very similar to it, only just way more emotive, surprisingly. As well, too, I've always stated that their sophomore album, um, through the Mirror is literally the musical definition of a clusterfuck, alright? It's, it's an artistic take on the word clusterfuck. How they're able to blend grindcore, noise, power electronics, industrial, black metal, uh, and just so many different other styles and make this very cohesive and kind of melodic sounding to a certain degree noise grind album. It's truly a work of art in just the most chaotic ways possible. And the last band that I'll mention that I'm surprised this band isn't brought up all that much is The Locust. I would say if you've ever wondered what The Residents would sound like if they were to be a grindcore band, they would sound like The Locust because their riffs are just so unorthodox for grindcore. It has like groove and hooks, but it's still like very fast paced and frantic as what you would expect within the style of grindcore. And I'm just surprised, honestly, like I've never seen anyone ever bring these guys up, yet they have quite a, like, a die-hard fan base within Grindcore. It's just I've never seen people on YouTube talk about them. But definitely if you're a Grindcore fan and you don't know of the Locust, you need to change that right now. Oh, fuck. Uh, boy. So now we're getting to the last two tiers, and this is where things just get like... Each, both of these tiers. So, um, tier number six, I call it Degenerate Grind. And these are typically going to be bands that play within the style of Gore Grind and Porno Grind. So, to, like, describe Gore Grind and Porno Grind, stylistically and musically, they're kind of like the same exact thing, only, like, lyrical themes are just different, whereas Gore Grind is explicit in the way of like very, you know, graphic, bloody, you know, bludgeoned looking imagery that you would find like on, you know, the dark web of like people being decapitated or just like, you know, rotted corpses, stuff like that. Whereas Porno Grind is explicit in the way of just like really sexual content and again just stylistically they're just like identical of having like gurgly guttural vocals that are very inhumane and just being as brutal as possible that a lot of these bands just kind of blend in with each other and it again for me I really can't tell the difference other than just themes but the first band I gotta bring up that I actually enjoy unironically is Cock and Ball Torture. Yep, that's right. As well, too, their names are really uh, ridiculous. 
But cock and ball torture, as I stated, is going to have gurgly, guttural vocals that, honestly, it sounds like, you know, when you're drinking the last bit of, like, chocolate milk through a straw and you get, like, that sound of, like, the bubbles. Uh, that's what the vocals sound like here. Or it actually sounds like, like, an obese frog, like, burping. Like, it, it, it's just so ridiculous. And I feel like when it comes to a lot of these bands, in order to enjoy them, you really need to just, like, turn off your brain and just become a degenerate and just not care because it's fun, but, like, in the dumbest way possible. And that's what I enjoy about Cock and Ball Torture's, like, approach. As, like, there's a lot of groove that makes it catchy, but, damn, it is just, again, obnoxiously heavy at the same time. I feel like it would be a crime against humanity if I were to talk about this style of music and not bring up the last days of humanity, which arguably is considered one of the first ever true gore grind bands that, again, a lot of gore grind bands take influence from this. Again, really similar to that of, like, just the overall approach, gurgly guttural vocals, um, you know, thick, dense grooves, pulverizing blast beats, you know, you know the works, basically. But, yeah, again, it would, it would be, you know, a crime, in my case, if I didn't bring these guys up talking about gore grind. Then you have bands like Regurgitate, another really respected gore grind band. Gut, which is really similar to that of Cock and Ball Torture, which just such lovely and explicit um, album covers. And then for the last one, because seriously, guys, just like every gore grind band and porno grind band looks and sounds like this. But the last one I'll bring up too is um, <laughs> me. Meat shits, which this is like really raw gore grind that it's like ugh, ear shattering to a certain degree. Like the, the the bass and the riffs that you'll hear with the instrumentation, it, it's like really harsh. Like I can't emphasize that enough. Now we have reached the bottom of the pit of this iceberg, which I call this tier dead end grind. All the bands within this tier are just super abrasive and it it's like you really start to ask is this grindcore or is this just straight up noise now? Like it's there's a thin line that these bands are like balancing on in order to stay within the term of like grind of any kind of degree and you know, as you would kind of expect talking about music with any of like, you know, the bottom of the pit tiers within an iceberg chart, be warned, this is like really harsh and crazy. But the first band I feel like I need to bring up that arguably was the first ever noise grind band that, you know, again, it's really uh, straight to the point, nothing groundbreaking per se, but you know, you, when you get the title of like first, with any uh, genre, I feel like they need to be brought up, is Fear of God. Uh, you know, this was released, I believe, their EP, what, 1988, something like that. And this is really harsh for, like, 80s extreme music. The vocals are really abrasive. Everything's obnoxious. The guitars really just sound like a noise board than, like, a guitar. And it's really hard to make out anything, but at the same time, it's really thick and pulverizing. That I feel like it just needs to be known that if you want to know about noise core and noise grind as niche of a genre as it is, arguably the first one that did it is Fear of God. Speaking of Fear of God, the next band is highly influenced from them to a certain extent. Only they take their approach and just turn the intensity to 11, which would be Sissy Spacek. Now, for the most part, these guys are a power electronic and noise project with their massive discography. 
However, there's a handful of releases within it where they fall under the title and tag of like, you know, Noise Grind and Noise Core. And what's just so funny is that this project is named after the actress, Sissy Spacek, you know, the woman who uh, was in the original Carrie. And it's just funny that a band like this, named after that actress, uh, is more intense and hectic than like a lot of war metal bands because this is just obnoxious, ear-shattering noise grind. It is like on the offensive to the point that it's like I really feel like I need to turn down the volume or else I'm gonna like actually damage my eardrums, just how obnoxious this shit is. Another band that's similar to that, A Fear of God and Sissy Spacek, is Set Star Set, uh, which is a Japanese noise grind duo that consists of a drummer and a vocalist who also plays bass guitar. And, um, yeah, this, again, really doesn't have, like, any song structure, rhythm, or musical integrity. Like, it... Like, what this sounds like, all their releases, is it just sounds like cavemen throwing rocks against the, the wall, only they have the ability to, th to throw their rocks at the speed of that of, like, a machine gun. Because it's just screaming and just noise. There is, like, no rhythm or pattern that these two are playing. It it's like, how do I make my bass guitar and my drums into just a soundboard of noise is what this is and it's like I don't know how anyone can distinguish any song that they write because it all sounds the same but if you just want pure unadulterated noise grind as it gets um, yeah Sept Star Sept is the uh, project to go to then there's the Garager Giggy Giggy Gig which the band name is in reference to the Japanese automatopias for throwing up and shitting at the same time. And this is a obviously Japanese project that blends like experimental and power electronics uh, noise music together that's actually quite respected within the noise scene because to be fair, a lot of their experimentation is actually really creative that I feel like other artists just don't want to do when they on how they experiment, so I'll give them that. But uh, what makes them count within this chart and uh, tier is that some of their releases can fall under like noise grind to a certain extent. However, it's really just like power electronics. Um, with blast beats smeared over it. And, uh, man, let me tell you, um, if you ever have a fetish or a kink for just, like, blowing out your eardrums, if that's just something you're in the mood for, like, right now and you need it, um, let me tell you, the Garager Gig 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 can supply you in the best way possible for that kink, because, goddamn, this shit is so fucking ridiculous. Oh boy. Alright, so the next project is something I recently discovered when I was trying to find more name drops for this tier. And, uh, yeah, again, just uh, really crazy stuff. But this is a uh, Kamari Gamma Kill. And it's like they listened to the Garaga Gig 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 and just thought, man, um,. I want to do that, is uh, what they probably thought, because this is just like really harsh, abrasive, glitch, and power electronics music with like the raspy shrieks of grindcore and the obnoxious pumbling blast beats over it, and it will just decimate you, honestly, because it's just a lot to take in, this project, and uh... Yeah, if you just want, like, an epileptic, adrenaline rush of, uh, of sounds, they'll give it to you a lot. 
<laughs> okay, so the last project I will include within this iceberg chart is like barely hanging on to the term of that of grind core in any sense. It's a mixture of break core, glitch, power electronics, cyber grind, and noise grind. So just keep that in mind. Like it's hanging on to grind core by like a fraction of an ass hair. But I feel like it needs to be brought up because this is like again an iceberg chart where at the bottom of the pit so things are just getting very abstract now from the norms. And this project is uh, <laughs> Princess Army Wedding Combat. And uh, wow, this is crazy. Like bonkers crazy. Like my, my god. <laughs> this is just so fucking insane. Like it's so hard to say with a straight face, okay? Like it... <laughs> feels like my brain got ripped out of my skull, someone smashed it to bits with a hammer, then put it in a blender, the, the remains, and made it into a smoothie, and then poured my the remains of that back in my skull. Like, and I'm just like trying to process everything that just happened. Like, oh my fucking god. It, 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 it plays all of those like electronic bits of break core, cyber grind, power electronics, and glitch so obnoxiously aggressive that it has like the spirit of that of grind to a certain extent, I guess, which is why it counts. But my god, it is like. It's disorienting how hectic it is, like, seriously. <laughs> All right, if I were to like pick what would be like the bottom of the pit of grind core, it's this. So just like fair warning, don't expect like you know dizzying guitar riffs, screechy vocals, and just like you know endless and quick blast beats. Like this is really like as I stated the dead end portion of anything within the term of that of grind, so be warned. Alright, so that'll do it for this iceberg chart right here. If there is any additions you would like to add, please let me know in the comments, and uh, yeah, that is that. So like always guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated, and have a great day.